Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel, through which I share my humble aviation knowledge with you guys. If this is your first time watching my videos and have found it helpful, kindly consider subscribing as this will help the channel. As per your request on Instagram, most of you have voted for a video about instrument approaches, so I had to make one for you guys. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. Well, first of all, let's look at how many types of approaches we have in the first place. Two types. We have visual approaches and instrument approaches. Instrument approaches are even subdivided into three categories as follows. Precision approach, non-precision approach, and last but not least, the most confusing and controversial, APV, approaches with vertical guidance. Now, let's look at each one individually in a bit more details, starting with visual approach. Visual approach. A visual approach is an approach when either part or all of an instrument approach procedure is not completed and the approach is executed with visual reference to the terrain or to the airfield in this case. With other words, it is an approach where alignment with the runway center line and the glide path are established and maintained visually without any instrument in the cockpit. For example, a visual approach is the approach you first learn to execute in your early stages of flying, when flying a traffic pattern or a circuit, or even when flying a very far cross country, where you get to join uh, uh, either a straight in approach or a downwind, then left base, and then left final, and then from that you uh, land the aircraft visually. Or also it could be that you are under an IFR flight, yet you are familiar with the local area and you do have the field in sight and you may continue visually and align yourself with the runway and land instead of going for an ILS radar vectors, which sometimes um, can be time consuming. However, I must emphasize that in order to fly a visual approach, the weather minimums must be VMC or greater, meaning you have to have the uh, field in sight, clear of clouds at all times, and as well and as well as you are uh, cleared for the uh, visual approach by the uh, uh, control center or radar or the tower. Now let's look at instrument approaches. Well, the ICAO defines an instrument approach as a series of predetermined maneuvers by reference to flight instruments in the cockpit with specific protection from obstacles from the initial approach fix or where applicable. From the beginning of a defined arrival route to a point from which a landing can be completed and thereafter if landing is not completed to a point at which holding or in-route obstacle clearance criteria apply. What does all that mean? It sounds fancy. So let's break it down to you guys. Well, basically it means that pilots transition the airplane from the in-route segment to the approach and landing relying solely on the cockpit instruments and with little or no outside references, typically in low visibility or at night or low cloud base or combination of them all. With other words, the pilots have no outside references to rely on. They only keep their eyes on the instruments. And these instruments tell them how to align them themselves with the uh, runway, both laterally and vertically. And these uh, cockpit instruments pick up signals from navigational aids placed either at or near the airport. We will talk about these navets in details shortly. There are three types of instrument approaches. First one is precision approach. A precision approach is an approach in which pilots receive both vertical and lateral guidance. Ground-based navigation aids or satellite-generated navigation data displayed in the cockpit deliver vertical and lateral guidance. Furthermore, ATC can also provide the pilot radar vectors to the runway. These types of approaches can get as low as 200 feet above the ground. Uh, examples, the ILS instrument landing system provides both lateral and uh, vertical guidance. Well, the lateral uh, from the localizer, which happens to be at the far end of the uh, active runway and the uh, vertical guidance from the glide slope, which is normally about uh, 300 meters down the threshold and slightly to the right or to the left of the runway. And then we have GLS or GBAS landing system, ground-based augmentation landing system, which is based on GNSS and an SBAS. 
and we also have uh, a PAR or a precision approach radar usually used by the uh, military but sometimes civilian aircraft can request it and the MLS macro landing system it's not that often you can find it now nowadays but it's considered a precision approach we have non-precision approaches are standard instrument approach procedures with only lateral guidance from the localizer signal unlike precision approaches the vertical guidance is not provided you either have to perform a series of step downs altitudes until you reach the predetermined MDA the minimum descent altitude and fly up to your missed approach point if you have the runway of course inside or its environment then you commit to land otherwise you go around or in case of a CDFA technique, continuous descent final approach, you pre-calculate your rate of descent according to your ground speed or the uh, glide path angle published on that non-instrument uh, approach procedure plate. And then at the final approach fix or final approach point, you start the descent at the uh, predetermined or pre-calculated rate of descent all the way down to your uh, MDA. Uh, we have examples of non-precision approaches, such as NDB, non-directional beacon, provides us only with lateral guidance. We have a VOR, a very high frequency omnidirectional range, also it's an, uh, a nav that provides only lateral guidance. We have also localizer, is a component of the ILS. Say, for example, the glide slope is inoperative, or for some reason, uh, some airports only have a localizer. Uh, component so localizer provides us with lateral guidance only so it's a non-precision approach we have also our nav approaches uh, like lnav lateral navigation only and we also have lda uh, localizer directional aid which is um, of course a localizer f uh, signal but that is um, offset by between 6 to 12 degrees from the runway center line now let's look at APV, approaches with vertical guidance, the most confusing and most controversial type of all instrument approaches, especially these days when these all fancy names of PBN, RNAV, RMP gets uh, thrown all away the place and some of us gets uh, a little bit of hard time uh, understanding all of, all of them. So let's uh, talk about them in a bit more detail. These types of approaches, as the name denotes, provide both lateral and vertical guidance to pilots. Now, if so, then why aren't they just categorized as precision, precision approaches? Well, the answer is that they do not conform with ICAO standards of precision approaches. And since they aren't well precise to be considered as precision, and precision enough to not be degraded as non-precision approaches, they thought Okay, let's come up with another category which falls in between non-precision approaches and precision approaches and call it APV. Another difference is that APV approach use signals from GNSS, Global Navigation uh, Satellite Systems, such as GPS. And also you need to have an SPS receiver, Satellite Based Augmentation System, which augments the GNSS uh, signal based on differential technique. If you have any doubts, questions about the uh, GNSS, SBAS, and all these uh, uh, topic, please leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to make a video about it, guys. So, to be able to fly an APV, like we said, you have to have a, GP, a GNSS receiver and an SBAS receiver. Uh, an SBAS, if you are in the US, that's a WAS wide area augmentation system. If you are in Europe, IGNOS is the, an SBAS uh, receiver. And then the Indian, they have the GAGAN. Uh, the Japan, they have the MSAS, and so on. And uh, these APV approaches include LPV, localizer performance with vertical guidance. So LPV, and we also have an LNAV VNAV, okay? So APV can also get you down to as low as 200 feet AGL, like an ILS, exactly. And even in certain circumstances, lower than uh, ILS. Now, what is the difference between an LPV and an LNAV-VNAV approach? 
yet they both fall into the same category of an APV, they're slightly different. First of all, they are both APV approaches, like we said. However, one is considered better than the other in terms of sensitivity as you get closer and closer to the runway. Let's talk about LNAV nav approach. Um, LNAV nav approaches were actually the first type of GPS approach that had vertical guidance. They were originally designed for barrel aided GPS units, but most uh, ASPAS receivers or WAS receivers, if you are in the US, IGNOS, if you are in Europe, can use them today as well. And unlike LPV approaches, LNAV nav approaches don't have increasing angular guidance as you approach the runway. Instead, they are just like an LNAV only approach, decreasing to 0.3 nautical mile sensitivity when you are within two miles of the final approach fix, all the way to the missed approach point. This is why their DA, decision altitude, is higher than of that of um, LPVs, which is usually 500 feet AGL. Okay? So the difference is LNAV nav has no angular uh, guidance. It stays 0.3 nautical mile from the final approach fix all the way down to the threshold. Now let's look at the uh, LPV. The extre LPV, the extremely accurate SPAS system, which is about 7.6 meters or better accuracy, gives you lateral and vertical guidance down to a decision altitude like an ILS. And just like an ILS, an LPV approach angular guidance gets more sens sensitive the, the closer you get to the runway. So keep in mind though, to fly them you need to have uh, an SPAS receiver. A barrel aided GPS wouldn't work. And of course the LPV uh, DA, decision altitude, are usually 200 feet just like an ILS. Sometimes it can get lower. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna leave you guys with this table right here uh, as a summary, so you can refer to it back whenever you want. Uh, take a screenshot and keep it with you. It uh, lays down the uh, all non-precision approaches, precision approaches, and vertical uh, approaches with vertical guidance. So again, thank you guys for watching. It's been a pleasure explaining and making this video for you guys. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below or follow me on Instagram. I will leave my uh, account in the uh, description box below. Thank you guys so much and fly safe. Uh, see ya.